all right welcome back to the channel uh it's the next morning after my last video on the veloster we're removing the engine um it's uh july 2nd i have uh two days left to get this engine done and get it back in the car and running so that i can drive it to indiana so uh i'm gonna go get my engine stand unbolt the transmission from the engine bolt the engine to the engine stand and then start showing how to uh replace this uh, head gasket so hope y'all enjoy this video all right so in order to get the transmission off because this is a manual i have to disconnect the shifter linkage bracket so that i can get this bolt out but basically i'm just going to go around and remove all the 14 millimeter bolts that are holding the transmission in so you got one on the bottom one in the dead center on the bottom another one right here one right here one right here one right here your two starter bolts and then another one right there so that's the other one that i showed from the bottom so get all those off and then the transmission should just pull straight off all right so far all the bolts have been the same size except for this one this one's longer than the rest of them you can see them all sitting over there this is the only one that's been long so far now i'm going to pull the starter bolts which should also be long and then these top bolts up here will probably be long as well okay so the shortest bolt in the entire transmission uh bell housing bolts goes in the dead center on the bottom so it goes in this bottom hole right here the other bolts are the same length until you get to the one that i just mentioned and that's this one the two top bolts in the transmission are just slightly shorter than that one and then the starter bolts are the two longest ones so these Shit. so now you can see the difference in the links they're not much different but this bolt goes into the bottom center these two are for the very top this one is for the right below the intake manifold and then these two are for the starter now once you have all the bolts out of the transmission around the bell housing you should just be able to pick this thing up and take it off let me get my keys out of my pocket you should just be able to pick this thing up it's relatively light There we go, transmission's off. We're just gonna set this over here to the side. Now I'm ready to uh, mount the engine stand to the back of the block, and then I can start working on the engine itself. So my engine stand, the standoffs on here are not long enough to, to bolt up unless I remove the clutch. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the clutch. Uh, I need to inspect it anyway because I bought a cheap ass clutch because I didn't plan on keeping this car on the road very long. And uh, it's very weak when I go to take off. So I don't know if it's just the pressure plate or what, but um, it's been working. I've put 30,000 miles on it since I put this clutch in here, but it is weak when I go to take off. And when I first put it in there, it was wanting to slip. I just think it's a weak pressure plate but that'll give me a chance to inspect it while I'm doing all this work. All right, I was hoping I had some bolts in my little uh, miscellaneous bolt bin that would work to bolt to the engine uh, to use this engine stand, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to run up to the hardware store and uh, get some bolts. And uh, when I get back, I'll let you know what size they are and how long I had to get them and all that kind of stuff. But. I'll be back after I go to the parts. All right, now that I've got the engine on the engine stand, um, the bolts going into the uh, engine block or the bell housing, where the bell housing bolts in is a M10 by 1.25 thread. And then I had to get them 80 millimeters long. Um, but now that I've got that bolted up, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling the valve cover off. I'm going to remove the crankshaft pulley. And I thought that the oil pan had to come off to remove the front cover on this engine because I watched a video on an Elantra video and this is different than the Elantra. So 
you do not have to take the oil pan off to get the timing chain off you can or to get the front cover off you can just take the front cover off right here so i'm gonna see if i can borrow my buddy terry's um impact socket and uh electric impact to take this off but i'm gonna go ahead and set it in time your timing marks are right here and then there should be a a groove right there so you can barely see it but there's a little tick mark right there so i'm a little bit past zero but i'm gonna pull the valve cover off and uh make sure that cylinder one intake and exhaust or, or make sure that the intake valve is closing on cylinder one and that'll be top dead center for number one piston to remove the valve cover you've got a series of 10 millimeter bolts so you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen probably that one fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen total Okay, so all the bolts that I removed from the valve cover, I also removed the coil packs to make it easier to get to these bolts. Um, but all the bolts that get removed from the valve cover are all the same length except for the ones that run right here by the, by the coil packs. Those four are a little bit longer. All right, so now that I've got all the bolts out of the valve cover, I can go ahead and pry it up. It will be stuck a little bit. You don't want to pry on the gasket surface um, I always try to get a good spot on the side to pry against and it's acting like I still have a bolt in it but I don't unless that one's holding it in I doubt it It's acting like it is. Let me take that bolt out. All right, so yes, that was holding it down. And it's the same length as the rest of the bolts. There's no more bolts holding it in unless this one's holding it in. Let's go ahead and remove it. No, that's just for the cover. So the valve cover should come off now. Oh, I have to take this VVT solenoid out. It slides up over top of that. So 10 millimeter bolt right here. sucker doesn't want to come out but it don't want to come out but it has to come out so there we go that o-ring was what was holding it so now there's metal inside of my vbt solenoid so that's not a good sign but now that that vbt solenoid is off this should come completely off now Now the cover's completely free, other than the gasket sticking. Like I said, this car has 250,000 miles and it's never been torn apart. So now that that's off, uh, it looks like I have to remove the cams in order to get the uh, head off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the crankshaft pulley and remove the front cover. I'll turn it around so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, 
So I have to remove this bolt right here and then the pulley should just be keyed and it should just slide off. And it's probably a 21 or 24. Okay, so this bolt is a 21 millimeter. Um, and because of the engine stand that I've got it on, it's actually the flywheel is hitting one of the alignment pins for the clutch against the um, stand. So I didn't have to put a pry bar or anything in there to hold the flywheel from spinning. The disadvantage to that is I'm not gonna be able to put this thing in time unless I unbolt it from the damn engine stand, which I don't wanna do. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get around that. I'm gonna have to unbolt this one arm so that I can rotate the engine and get it where I need it. So I'm actually gonna tighten that back down. I'll pick back up after I get it back in time. Okay, now I've got the engine pretty close to time. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this bolt loose again. And now I should just be able to turn this by hand and get it at zero. So when you're at zero, you have two marks on the front of the cams on the phasers that point to each other and then this will be lined up to zero when i get the front cover off i'll do a close-up of the cam uh phasers so that you can see what i'm talking about as far as timing alignment so just go ahead and run this bolt out take the pulley off Now we're gonna remove all the bolts for the front cover. So the bolts for the front cover, are gonna be a series of 10 millimeter bolts all along the bottom and along the side. Um, looks like the water pump that I just installed is gonna have to be removed as well. This engine mount's gonna have to be removed. And then you've got a couple 12 millimeter bolts that have to come out to take cover off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the water pump, remove the motor mount, and then I'll pick back up and show you where all the bolts are for the front cover. All right, so I removed all the bolts out of the front cover. Uh, you do have to remove the pulley that was right here in order to get to that bolt. Um, all the bolts on the entire front cover are 10 millimeter except for three 12 millimeters. So you got a 12 millimeter here, here, and here. And then, or no, here. These are for the, these two and these two are from the engine mount. This is the additional 12 millimeter. This is the longest 10 millimeter bolt that you have. These two are a little bit longer and then all the rest of them are the same length. So now that I've got all the, all the bolts out of here and it really sucks because I had a really good seal on my water pump that I just replaced, but I'll reseal it anyway. So now that I'm at this point, I'm ready to start prying the front cover to get it to come off. Okay, so I wanna point out something cool 
Most car companies don't do this for you, but Hyundai did it for you. There are places to screw in jack screws to push the front cover off of the pins because there's a pin located right here and there's a pin located right here. So they put the jack bolts right next to where the pins are and it presses the thing off. So that was really nice of them. Um, but don't do like I did and don't have a pan underneath it. You need to have a pan underneath it before you break that shit loose. Uh, it started leaking oil uh, when I started popping the pan off. But now you can see the timing marks. If I can get it to focus, there's a timing mark right there and a timing mark right there. I'm slightly off, but I think it moved when I was uh, when I was trying to pry the front cover off. Uh, the front cover is only held on with silicone and bolts. There is no, um, and you can see where the bolt was digging in to press it off. So I'm going to take some Scotch Brite and some sandpaper and clean that up in both of those locations. Um, when you replace your timing chain, it actually has colored links that you match up with specific locations on your chain, on your, um, on your sprockets. And, uh, I'll actually do that when I put it back together. There's the location for one of them. There's the location for the other one. And then there's the location for the third one. So this link would actually go here. This one would go there and this one would go there. And that, that way you ensure that the timing is correct. Now that I've got this uh, front cover exposed and everything's good to go, um, I'm going to remove the tensioner. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push it back and I'm gonna put a pin in that hole right there. You can see that lever moving. So I'm gonna push it back, put a pin in there, and then I will take the uh, bolts out and pull the, pull the tensioner out. Now, the way this tensioner works, if you want to uh, collapse the tensioner further than what it would allow you, all you do is when it's, in the ex when it's in the extended position, you push down on this, push back on the guide, and then pull up on this, and it acts as a lock. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now it, it popped forward. If you push down on that, you can pull it back in, let it come out, until you can get it to line up and then stick an Allen wrench in there or a pin of some sort and it'll hold it in the collapsed state. So now I can take these bolts out without worrying about the tensioner flying apart on me. Okay, now that the tensioner's removed, I can remove this guide on this side and then I'll do an inspection on the guide and see how it looks. It doesn't look like there's any wear on any of this stuff. And I'm like I said, this thing has 245,000 miles. So that tells me this chain is gonna last the entire life of this car. So you shouldn't have any worries about this as long as you change your oil regularly, uh, cause I do uh, oil changes religiously on this thing. Um, but as long as you change your oil regularly, uh, you shouldn't have any wear issues with your chain. I'll confirm that once I get this uh, torn further apart. So here's the timing chain guide. It does have some wear, but it's very minimal. Um, for this thing having 250,000 miles, that is very, very minimal wear. Uh, I would be completely comfortable running this for another 250,000 miles. I wouldn't even think twice about it. So now that I have that guide off, I'm actually going to go ahead and pull the chain and line it up with those alignment marks so you can see what I'm talking about as far as the colored links lining up with those pins. Okay, so here's a better show of how this lines up so you can see the the center punch hole right there lined up with the uh, orange colored link. And then there's the hole in the cam phaser lined up with the orange colored link. And then there's the other countersunk hole lined up with the orange link. So as long as you line all that stuff up, when you put your other tension, when you put your other guide on here and put the tensioner in, the thing will be in time. So that's, that's an actual really nice thing about these timing chain systems is they do colored links to make it easier to realign it but I have to remove the chain because I'm pulling the cams. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the chain. I'm gonna pull this other guide off and then I'll start tearing the, the uh, camshafts out so that I can pull the head off. Uh, I am going to remove the intake manifold um, and it's 12 millimeter bolts. You've got one here, one underneath there, one in that pile of 
I don't know, acorns. One right there, one right there. And that's all that there is holding this on. There are no uh, hidden bolts underneath. You just take those one, two, three, four, five out and the whole uh, intake manifold will come off. There is a bracket on the bottom of it, I believe. I could be wrong. No. So yeah, you just pull those five bolts and the intake manifold should Now come in order out. to remove the cams, you have to remove the VVT, VVT solenoid housing. It's a 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt here, and then it's got an O-ring style seal right here. But you have to do that because you have the whole front bearing uh, for both cams is a single bridge. And then all of these cam bearing blocks are 10 millimeter. Um, typically, I will loosen them one at a time um, and only do them a quarter turn at a time until I get all of them loosened and I'll, I'll slowly walk the whole thing up. I will, however, take the front bearing block, this entire front bearing block right here, I'll take that off first before I start taking these other ones off. That way when the cam starts lifting up, it's free to move wherever it needs to move. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I've, I've already removed the front uh, bridge, but you have to keep these bearing blocks in the exact same order, rotation and everything of how they come out of here. They have to go back in the exact same locations because that's your bearing journal for your camshafts. So make absolutely certain that these go back in the exact same orientation and the exact same location when you put it back together. Now, once you get the camshafts removed, there's a bunch of these little covers that go over top of your uh, valve springs. Sometimes I'll pull them. If they're in there pretty good, I won't pull them. Um, I'm going to pull them just to make sure that nothing happens as far as, so you can see, pull that out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull these and I'm going to mark them. Every one of them needs to go back in the exact same location that they came out of. That's what sets your valve clearance for your camshaft and for the lift and all that. So I'm gonna go get some sandwich baggies. Uh, you're gonna need 16, I think. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, you're gonna need 16 and you need to label them exhaust and intake. Uh, I typically start at the front, do I1, I2, I3, I4. Same with the exhaust, I do E1, E2, E3, E4 and so on and so forth. Bag all those up, that way they stay clean. And that way, if you turn the head over, you don't run the risk of those dropping out and losing the location that they were originally in. All right, to remove the intake manifold, uh, I unbolted this bracket from the bottom of the intake manifold. It's bolted in right there. And then I also unbolted the, the wiring harness, this wiring harness for the fuel injectors that was mounted on top, it's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. Then you just take the five, three bolts and two nuts out, and then the uh, intake manifold will just pull right off. So now the intake manifold's off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my bags and put all these uh, valve spacers in the bags and then I'm gonna be ready to pull. All right, there is one more piece that has to be unbolted before I can unbolt the head, and that's gonna be this uh, heater hose tube right here. Uh, gonna have to unbolt it here, which is a 12 millimeter. And then unbolt it here, which is a 10 millimeter. And then I should, and then I, if you want to, you can pull it all the way out. You can take these two 10 millimeter nuts off and pull the whole thing out. Um, I'm probably gonna wind up doing that. And then I'll, what I'll wind up doing is disconnecting this hose right here because I've got it bypassed. If I didn't have it bypassed, this would have been disconnected with the throttle body. But because I've got it bypassed, um, I'm actually probably gonna go find a new hose to just loop straight down here and get rid of this junction right here. All right, now that I have all my lifter or valve spring uh, uh, shims, uh, removed and in labeled bags. Now I can get to all the bolts. That bug sounds wicked. 
But anyway, now I can start taking the bolts out of the head and these are triple squares. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. All right, so if you've watched any of my Audi videos, you're already familiar with what a triple square is, but that's a triple square. You can pick them up at any auto parts store, but that's what the cylinder head bolts on this engine are. I don't know if I can get it to focus, but they are triple square. I believe this is a 10 millimeter triple square. It might be a 12. I'm not 100% certain. I cut them to shorten them uh, for working on the Audi, but uh, you just put a 13 millimeter socket on here, stick it down in there and wrench away. All right, when loosening these head bolts, you do it in a crisscross pattern. So you start in the center and then go here, 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 here. And that's how you got to do it the whole way through. And you do them at quarter turn increments until you get all of them loose. All right, now that all the bolts are completely loose, go ahead and pull them out. That way they don't hang up the head when I go to uh, pull it up. So there's all the head bolts out of it. And now I did not remove this tube because the fuel injector is in the way. So I just took that bolt out and pried it off the head. And now the head is ready to come off. So let me put this in the stand. So now all I need to do is just wiggle the head and it should come right off. So there's the cylinder head completely off of the engine. Now the head gasket doesn't really look bad per se, but I know it's bad because it was leaking coolant. So hopefully I can see where it was leaking coolant at. And surprisingly, the pistons don't look like they have that much carbon on them at all. I've got that one. So this is the one that had to be leaking because it's full of carbon. So that had to be where it was leaking trying to see if I can see where it was leaking in the yeah so you can see yeah it was leaking on that cylinder right there that's the only one that's got a bunch of carbon on it. all the rest of them look good so that one looks good that one looks good that one's full of carbon and that one looks good so this is the cylinder that was leaking the coolant I don't see any issues with the cylinder wall itself so it had to be the gasket. So I'm gonna run with it. I'm gonna clean the top of the block right here, get a new head gasket, clean the bottom of the head, and then call it a day. Um, let's do an inspection on the head to see. So yeah, this is the one that had to be leaking because look at the exhaust valves on that one compared to the other three so this is the one that was leaking and it looks like it was leaking right there i know it's kind of hard to tell but there's a blowout spot in the gasket right there and right there so it looks really clean on this side so it had to be coming in from this side so it was coming in right here and right here that's definitely where it was coming in right there so I should be able to just surface this, clean it up, get a new head gasket, put it back together, and I should be ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, it's getting a little late, but I'm still trying to get this done. Uh, I took a little bit of a break and went over to my sister's house and went swimming, enjoyed some time with my kids. But I've gone ahead and I've taken some thousand grit sandpaper and a sanding block. Uh, use the sanding block. Don't want to do this with your hands because you'll put waves in it. But if you use a sanding block and you do long, consistent strokes across the top of the block and across the top of the head, you can clean it up and you won't damage the surface of it as long as you, like I said, do long, continuous strokes. Now that I've got the entire surface where the actual gasket sits cleaned up, 
I'm gonna wipe it down with some lacquer thinner and then I'm gonna throw my new head gasket on there. And then here are the new uh, cylinder head bolts. Like I said before, these are torque to yield. So they're one-time use bolts only. Uh, when What torque to yield means is that the bolts actually get stretched when you tighten them to torque. And uh, once they're stretched one time, they're no good ever again. Uh, I have used them, I have reused them in the past when I was younger and more inexperienced. I will never do that again. Always, always, always replace your cylinder head bolts if they are torque to yield. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the, wipe the block down and wipe the head down with some lacquer thinner, put the new head gasket on here and start doing the torque sequence for bolting the head back on. Okay, so there is, when you replace the bolts, you need to replace the washers. And when you get the new bolts, it should come with new washers. So I've got all new washers and all new bolts. And I'm trying to hurry because it is freaking getting ready to storm. You can hear thunder and lightning. Um, I gotta hurry up and get this back together so that I can put a tarp over it so I don't get water inside the engine. So I'm gonna hustle. I may skip some stuff just because I'm trying to get this done before the rain hits. So please excuse me if I do. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna torque the head bolts in. I'm gonna put all my lifter uh, spacers in here put the cams back in, bolt the cams in, and at least get the valve cover set on it, and I'll put something cover in the front end so that I don't get any water inside the engine. But I really gotta hustle, so I may skip a few things. All right, guys, I had to stop working on the car for the night. It sounds really bad out here, thunder and lightning. Um, it's been getting closer and closer, and I just went ahead and got as much of the engine back together as I could, uh, just throwing it together so that I could get the thing covered up so that I can get a bunch of water in the engine and then I threw my tarp over top of it and uh sounds like I finished just in time because it's starting to rain now so um that being said I uh I went ahead and torqued the head down um torqued the uh camshaft uh bearing races down and the front bridge um off top of my head, the cylinder head torque specs were 22 foot-pounds and then turn them additional 90 degrees and then turn them in additional 90 degrees. Um, I honestly, I can't remember what the cam bearing uh, caps were. I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to look it back up and see what it was. I was trying to rush to get this thing to where I didn't have any water getting in the motor. Um, but I'll pit back up on it tomorrow morning and uh, continue showing you how to get it all the way, all the rest of the way back together, uh, sealing the motor back up, putting the new seals in there. Um, so the only gaskets that I'm replacing are the head gasket, the head bolts, and then the valve cover gasket set. Uh, intake manifold gasket is a O-ring and it still looks like it's okay. Uh, and if it's not, it's really easy to pull the intake manifold and replace that gasket. So I'm not super worried about it. And then the exhaust manifold gasket is a uh, steel gasket, so I should be able to reuse it. I've done it many times in the past and haven't had issues. But again, if it blows out, it's a cheap enough gasket. The problem is nobody has it in stock. I went to try and buy it today. Nobody has it in stock anywhere local. Uh, the closest one was in Tennessee, and I'm not driving all the way to Tennessee in my Audi uh, so that I can get the Hyundai back going. So... I'll just have to wait until I get back from Indiana to replace it if it if I need to replace it. But I'll pick back up tomorrow morning, show you where I got it, and uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully, I'll have this motor back in the car by the end of the day tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Uh, I had some pretty brick, wicked storms come through here last night. Um, I uh, torqued down the head bolts. The head torque that I read in the service manual is uh, 22 foot-pounds and then turn it 90 degrees then break all of them loose and then retorque it to 22 foot-pounds and turn it another in 90 degrees uh, i worded it a little weird in the previous section of the video but um it's not 90 degrees and then 90 degrees it's 90 degrees then you break the bolts loose retorque it to 22 and then do another 90 degrees um, i left out the part about breaking them loose had too much on my mind last night. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue putting this thing back together. 
Um, I'm going to start by putting the timing chain back on and putting the timing guides on, uh, clean the front of the block and the head and get it to where I can seal the front uh, timing cover back on here. And then uh, we'll just go from there. All right, once you have the timing chain lined up with your marks, so like I said before, the orange link goes to this dot, this orange link goes to this dot, and this orange link goes to this dot. Once you have all that lined up, bolt your tensioner in, pull that, and I generally push on here with just one finger just to get it to where all the slops out of the chain and it'll tighten up as the as the engine runs um, you can also turn the pulleys and get it to where the chain slop gets pulled out and it will it will slowly tighten as you do that um, i just do that because i know these cams turn pretty easy and uh it'll line it up so now that that's done i'm going to clean the front of the front engine cover and then clean or clean the front of the engine and then clean the front of the engine cover and then i'm going to reseal it and start bolting it on all right so i just got done installing the front cover on the engine uh you need to make sure that you get all the oil out of this oil pickup right here because uh i had it where i was going to put it on the engine as soon as i turned it up oil started dropping down and got all over my silicone right here so i had to wipe it clean get all the oil out of there and re-silicone it and uh got it to where it's not leaking when i put it on there so bolted that up put the engine mount on there because the water pump is what actually clamps this other side down so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to temporarily install the water pump without the sealant on there just to hold that tight until i can get the uh rest of the motor together and then i'll pull that off and uh clean the gasket and then reinstall the water pump but i'm just going to do that so that while the silicone is setting up uh it dries in the spot where it's supposed all to. all right now that i've got the front cover on i've got the crankshaft pulley back on the idler pulley back on and i went ahead and mounted the alternator mounting bracket on here because the top bolt actually holds the front cover to the engine to the front of the block i'll take it back off when i go to put the, the engine back in the car but i've wiped down the entire top of the head with a uh, lacquer thinner and here's my new gasket set i just want to point out that this triple o-ring set right here for the vvt solenoid that gasket is included with the valve cover gasket set so uh go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and pull that out put the new gasket in there put the new gasket in the valve cover and then put a little bit of silicone right here where it overlaps where the brake is from the front cover to the head I'll just put a little bit there and a little bit there and then put the whole valve cover on here and I'll be ready to tighten it down. Okay, the valve cover gasket also came with a new gasket for here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and replace it as well. All right, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, I had the uh, throttle body coolant, the preheater for the throttle body disconnected and bypassed. And I had all this extra hose on there. I just went ahead and rerouted it to where I've just got a single pipe hooking the two together. Okay, so I've got the whole engine uh, back together with the exception of the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold. I'm putting the clutch back on here right now. I do not have a clutch alignment tool, but what I do is just make sure that you can feel the, the spline part of the clutch disc is in the center of the crankshaft. And then also, because this clutch has already been installed on this vehicle, there's shadow marks on the clutch or on the pressure plate that you can see where the clutch disc used to sit. And I just lined up those shadow marks to make sure that it was in the center. It's close enough to where when I tighten this thing down and I go to put the uh, transmission on here, it'll pull wherever it needs to pull to get it into place. And then as soon as the first, before I start the car, I'll press the clutch pedal in and get the clutch to release and that, that'll center it up. All right, so now I'm gonna start putting the transmission back on here. Uh, I'm going to do it in time lapse because I don't want to see how I, I don't want y'all have to sit here and watch while I'm fighting with this thing. So hopefully it won't take too long. All 
All right, that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the bracket for the uh, shifter cables. <clears throat> and I'm gonna mount the starter. Uh, I'll move the camera so you can see where the starter goes. So I wanna take this opportunity to clear up something as far as uh, what I've been seeing online, people wondering where the drain plug and the fill plug are for the manual transmissions. This is gonna be the drain plug. This is the fill plug. You put oil in there until it just slowly drips out of the top of that or out of the bottom of that hole. That's when it's full. It does not, the, ca the case does not get filled all the way up. It only has a little bath of oil in there. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the starter. Starter is located right there underneath the intake manifold. So the starter mounts right here. All right, guys, whole friggin' motors back together. Everything's bolted up, ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> Only thing I have left to do is put the engine cover on, but I'm gonna, I still gotta change the oil and oil filter, and uh, I'll put the cover on after I do that. Um, that, and I discovered that I need to replace the brake pads, so I'm gonna go buy new brake pads. So doing this uh, work today, uh, starting to where all I had was the head bolted onto the block. Uh, I didn't have the timing uh, chain back on or the guides. Um, I did have the cams bolted into the head, but I didn't have any of the timing system done. So doing the timing system, putting the front cover on, and then doing all the rest of the assembly work uh, wound up taking me exactly uh, six hours. Um, that's getting it back in the car, everything bolted up, ready to go. I mean, if I had the oil and oil filter I could fill it up and I mean, honestly, I really don't want to start it yet because I want to give the, the silicone t uh, time to completely cure. So I'll probably do first start on it after the rebuild tomorrow morning. Um, but I'm going to, but I'm going to go ahead and post the, uh, video that I have now. Hopefully this will, uh, continue to help the community, the Veloster community. Um, and like always in these videos if if you like what i did or if it helped you in any way please like comment share subscribe show your friends what i'm doing uh, i'm doing this for the community uh trying to help people out so that they don't have to pay ridiculous amounts of money to get this work done so uh anything that you guys can do to help me out uh would help me to bring more content to you guys um by having more subscribers uh i do I do appreciate everybody that has subscribed so far and I've picked up quite a few subscribers over the last couple weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, let's continue to have this channel to grow. I really appreciate everybody's support. Y'all have a great one and I'll see you in the next video.